Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? This morning, we're going to be reading out of Psalm 30, verse 6. In my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Now in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Let's go and read this in its context. Starting in verse 1, joy comes in the morning. A psalm, a song at the dedication of the house of David. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you healed me. O Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment. His fame, favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Now in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face, and I was troubled. I cried out to you, O Lord, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood? When I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? Will it declare your truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. To the end, that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Beautiful psalm. Beautiful, beautiful psalm. Moab settled on his lees. He hath not been emptied from vessel to vessel. Give a man wealth. Let his ships bring home continually rich freights. Let the winds and waves appear to be his servants, to bear his vessels across the bosom of the mighty deep. Let his hands yield abundantly. Let the weather be, be propitious to his crops. Let uninterrupted success attend him. Let him stand among men as a su successful merchant. Let him enjoy continued health. Allow him, with braced nerve with, and brilliant eye, to march through the world and live happily. Give him the buoyant spirit. Let him have the song perpetually on his lips. Let his eye be ever sparkling with joy and the natural consequence of such an easy state to any man. Let him be the best Christian who ever breathed will be presumption. Even David said, I shall never be moved. And we are not better than David, nor half so good. Interesting, David broke all Ten Commandments in one move. And yet this can still be said about him. Brother, beware of the smooth places of the way. If you are treading them, or if the way be rough, thank God for it. If God should always rock us in the cradle of prosperity, if we were always dandled on the knees of fortune, if we had not some stain on the alabaster pillar, if there were not a few clouds in the sky, if we had not some bitter drops in the wine of this life, we should become intoxicated with pleasure. We should dream we stand, and stand we should, but it would be upon a pinnacle, like the man asleep upon the mast. Each moment we should be in jeopardy. If you know what that is, that's actually an old, this comes back from a little ways, it's an old ship term, sleep on the mast. Some of the ship's crews on the old sailing ships would climb up the ropes, get up on top of the mast, and there's times where the sails would go up and down, and so they would just stay up there. And if everything was cool, everything was fine, they'd prop themselves up, or they would wrap the rope that held the sail up to hold them up, and they'd go to sleep up there. Because it was more work to climb up and down than to just stay up there. But when the sea started to toss a little bit, that person could get flung off. And you know, you're that high up, and it flings you. You might go sailing a couple hundred yards. You might get flung way out there, or then you're food for the sharks. Or if you fall down to the deck, it'll kill you. What he's saying here is let us not get too comfortable. When we're doing well, let us not get too comfortable. But instead, be on guard. Be wary. 
Things are always the quietest and the most peaceful right before the lion attacks. And you don't see him coming. But instead, let us give thanks to God always that he leaves reminders in our lives. I was just considering this this morning, actually, in my own life. And he leaves reminders in our lives that we're still broken. We still have sin. We're still in this sinful flesh. That this world is still what it is. Because it's real easy to lose sight when everything's going good of what's going on just outside of the ring of light you're standing in. Because in this world, evil always waits. Looking for its moment. To catch you unawares. To catch an off-guard moment. And then something happens. So instead of us looking down at these moments, let us look up at, up at these moments and consider them. And give thanks to God that we have reminders to keep us in check. Reminders to keep us from going into pride. To keep us from thinking too highly of ourselves. Because it's much better to be humble and do well than to be prideful and do well. Because pride comes before the fall. We bless God, then, for our afflictions. We thank him for our changes. We extol his name for losses of property. For we feel that had he not chastened us, thus, we might have become too secure. Continued worldly prosperity is a fiery trial. Fiery trial, indeed. I, I would rather not be prosperous. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I would rather not be prosperous because... About the time everything is going really good and smooth, that's when you should worry. When I take trips and everything is running really smooth, that's when I'm paying very close attention. Because that's when something's going to happen. And that's when I don't take any chances. Things are running smooth, everything's going fine, that's when I don't take chances. Even a small thing happens. I hear or feel the vehicle do something. You know, been driving a long time, learned to telltale signs of tires going low and things like that. I pay very close attention because I know something. Just why do you think people have wrecks? Because they're not paying attention. Something could go wrong. In this life, we have to be on that guard. In this life, we have to be watching because we are surrounded by evil at all times. Evil is constantly working, trying to do something. To bring us down. And so we have to pay attention. We have to watch. We have to be on our guard. Be in the word. Know what it says. Be familiar with it. Is that way you can stand our ground in the truth. That we can give an answer. That we can defend. Because when things are going really good. That may just be the moment when things are suddenly going to turn really bad. And so we give thanks to God always. Knowing that he directs that path. Afflictions, though they seem severe, in mercy oft are sent. Sometimes we need these things. We need these things to keep us in check. To be a reality check for us. I spent my whole life going through stuff like this. And it's it's been, let me tell you, it... There is, there is no road on this earth as rough as that. Of every waking moment wondering when things are going to fall apart. Or even standing there watching it happen with your own eyes. <clears throat> but in this we learn something. In this we grow. In this we become more in Jesus Christ. Because we're being taught we're learning. We're being prepared for heaven. And another aspect is we're being, our connection to this world is being broken. The Lord doesn't want us dependent on this world. He wants us dependent on him. He is our father. We're his children. We should be. I don't look to another parent. Look to him. He's my parent. He's my father. So we have to learn to be not dependent on ourselves, not dependent on this world, but dependent on him. And when we're dependent on him, the problems of this world almost cease to be a problem altogether. But it can be hard. From the perspective we have, it can be hard to see things this way. It can be hard to look past this and see where the Lord is doing work in your life. 
it's a hard road. We've had it rough. It's been a, a long, hard road. Look at the battles we've been fighting. I mean, I've been doing this since 2019. Look at the battles we fought. Some of y'all have been with me since that year. Some the next year. But look at the battles. Look at the struggles we've gone through. The attacks and comment sections. The attacks and emails. I can't even begin to, to express some of the horrible emails I've gotten. Some of the horrible comments I've gotten. Comments that nobody ever saw. Emails I never shared. Because they were so vile. But that's par for the course in this life. If we speak truth, if we stand up for what we know is right, if we stand up for the Bible, people are going to attack us. Even those who call themselves Christians. Especially those who call themselves Christians. Because they hate God. But since they can't get to him or touch him, they come after us. Well, a servant isn't greater than his master. So if they went after our Lord, and it was because they were mad at God, they went after Jesus, they're going to come after us too. So in this life, when things are going good, that's where you need to pay very close attention. Because if they can't come and they can't attack you directly, they will do it by subversion. They will come in under the radar. They'll come through somebody else. They'll come in through a little, simple little temptation. It'll turn into something really big, a big problem. And so when we're doing well, when things are going smooth, let us be watchful and be thankful. Let us not take for granted that everything is going to stay that way. Because this life changes constantly. Let us never take for granted that now that we're Christian, now that we're a believer, that the Lord is going to make everything go super smooth for us. For some, he will. For some, he won't. For some, there's still things we have to learn. There's still things we have to endure. Sometimes some of us... We don't know this. He does. Some of us need the constant troubles to keep us in check. Some of us, after a while, come out of that stuff and don't need it anymore. We're locked in. We're rock solid. But some of us need it. And so when we recognize this, give thanks for it. Realize he's doing some a kindness to us. He's showing us a great deal of mercy, like the devotion says. And so that we won't turn back to the world. We won't go back to the way things were. We won't say, okay, everything's cool. I can re relax now. If we always do the right thing, if we always follow what he has said, we won't have any problems. Now, life will still give us problems, but we won't have any problems with the Lord. But too many times we get lax and we decide, eh, it's okay. No. Yeah. If this is what he said, this is what we do. And the world around us will punish us for it. It's part of being an alien in an, in an alien environment. It's part of living in a place that isn't our home. We'll never be comfortable here. We'll never be able to relax here. That's the point. How can we ever be comfortable in our home? We go stay at a hotel. It could be a really nice hotel. That's not home. I'm not comfortable there. We go stay at a friend's house or even family's house. That's not home. I can't be comfortable there. The only place we're really truly comfortable is home. That's not here. That's heaven. And so don't be surprised at the fiery trial. Just know that it's meant for our good. And praise him and thank him for that. Let's do that this morning. Because all of us are going through trials. All of us are struggling. All of us have things that are popping up or hitting us from one, two, three, all sides. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. To lift you up and to sing praises unto your holy name. <coughs> Father, thank you for this holy word, and thank you for this devotion. I'm very wiped out this morning. My eyes are very, feel like they're swollen. Sleep all night, still wiped out. But Father, I give thanks. I give thanks that I have this. This reminds me to stay in check and stay on the guard. This reminds me to keep looking to you. And we've got this wrong idea because we've been taught this about the things in life that happen and, and which ones are good and which ones are bad. And we've 
since come to realize by reading your word, just because things are going good doesn't mean that it's a good thing. Sometimes when things are going bad, that's a good thing because it works for our good, because we love you. Your word confirms this, tells us this quite plainly. When things are good, we have to be watchful. We can't let our guard down. We're not in our environment. We're not at home. We're not where we're supposed to be. And so the enemy is always there. We can't just relax and, and kick back and everything's going to be fine. It's funny, the, the, all the zombie movies, you know, the people get into a place where everything's fun and they all start playing and relaxing, having a good old time, joking around, and then all of a sudden that's when disaster happens. A bunch of zombies find a way in. Um, the Walking Dead TV series, always like that. By the time everything was looking good and going great, they realized they were in a whole city full of cannibals. Or they were in a place that had a, there was no way to get out whenever the zombies surrounded them. Or, or there was a break in the wall of the fence or something like that. There was always something. You never, there was never a moment to relax. And then on top of that, there was the people that were, weren't zombies that were trying to take everything away too and take them over. It just it, These movies imitate this so amazingly. There's, you, you, there's never a moment to relax in these types of shows. And that's how our life is here, in, in a way. There's never really a moment to relax. We have those unguarded moments. And you are protecting us and watching over us. But there are times where we can't let our guard down. And I found that when things are going the best, that's when we need to be watchful. Because it's when everything is quiet. And all the birds are singing. All the grasshoppers are chirping. There's no sense of danger. That's when the lion is in the bush waiting. The old hunter's motto, when you're hunting in areas where there's mountain lions, is when everything seems okay, that's when you need to be wary. When everything seems like it's fine, that's when you need to watch, because that's when the mountain lion is stalking you. It's when things don't seem fine that you're safe. Because you're on guard. And we get so lulled into these false senses of security in this world today because that's what we're taught. People want us to let our guard down and just relax and everything's fine. Well, look what's happened in the last three years. Look at how much of a disaster this has been because we just let our guard down and took for granted what everybody was telling us was true and now it's become a debacle and a disaster. But Father, in all this, I pray that we trust in you. Whether our guard is up or down, we trust in you. And that we recognize that these things that happen are directed by you only. Well, these things only happen because you allow them to happen to us. Or because you'll bring these things to us. Because it's for our betterment. So make us to give thanks. To change our understanding. To change our attitude about such things. Because we know that no matter what happens to us, it's going to work out for our betterment. No matter what happens, it's going to be for our good. And so the more we need to pay attention, to look into your word, to look to you, to be in prayer, to watch, to pay very close attention and be on guard of ourselves so that we don't step off the path. Because this path is very narrow. It's a hard way to go, but it is the right way. And along this path, now that we're getting right near the end of it, there's a bunch of people that are swinging at us. There's people on the sides of the path throwing stuff at us. Some of them are trying to lasso us and pull us off the path. Now that we're near the very end, it is just like an all-out assault all the way around in every aspect of society, in every aspect of our awareness, that we are being distracted Father, may we stay focused. Make us to stay focused on you and your word. Make us stay focused on Jesus Christ. Make us to stay focused on doing the right thing, the truth. Following your word and doing what it says, being a doer of it. We have the more sure word in our hands. 
So we know there is no battle that can't be won by just showing the truth. So Father, may we learn from this and grow from this and become more thankful for these things. And instead of looking at how bad it is and feeling sorry for ourselves, instead look for what is being brought to us. Look for what we're supposed to learn and grow and look to you always. This life will never be completely easy. It'll have its moments, but it'll never be completely easy. There's always going to be something that's going to go wrong. There's always going to be some issue. So let us never take for granted that this life is going to just suddenly get better whenever we're Christians and everything's going to be good. But instead, pay attention to what your word tells us about this life. And what our Lord said, if you can't add an hour to your life, if you can't make yourself a cubit taller, 18 inches taller, if you can't do something so simple, why do you worry about anything else? So, Father, make us to not worry. Pay attention. Be ready, but not worry. The whole goal was for us to be ready, to always be ready. The, the marriage uh, ceremonies and the events, always be ready. The, the um, ten virgins, you need to always be ready. Jesus, be ready. Everybody, all the apostles, be ready. Be ready and watching at all times. And not to stop and relax, not to take our shoes off and sit back. Because, especially now, at the end of the age, and we can go back and very easily calculate the, the three ages there's already been. Many people disagree with it. Well, it's really easy to go look it up. It literally takes five minutes. We can see that we're at the end of this third age, and the next age is the age of our Lord, the millennial reign, the last age. That we need to be all the more diligent, to be in your word, and to be focused, to stay focused, even when we're tired, even when we're bleary-eyed, even when we're in a lot of pain, even when there's many things distracting us in many different directions, we need to pay attention. Father, make us to do that. Make us to be in your word. Make us to focus. Especially now. All of us. And make us to give thanks and be thankful that we have you watching out for us and watching over us. And keeping us ready. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation given to us through the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. In his mighty name, we bless you. We praise you. We honor you and glorify you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for morning devotion. It's real easy to get lulled into a false sense of security. And I think that's probably going to be the big trick. The big surprise that's coming. Peace and safety. Peace and safety. Peace and safety. I suddenly get a very strong sense that's about to come about. A false sense of security lulled into a false sense of security. And I think they're trying to do that with everybody in the world. Everything's fine, guys. Just relax. You may even hear that exact statement come from political leaders. Everything's fine, guys. Just relax. That's when you don't relax. That's when you look around. That's when you start watching. When everybody's looking one direction, that's when you start to look around and see what's going on behind you. I don't let people walk behind me anymore. It's something that I got from PTSD. Um, but I'll, you know, people are trying to walk. I'll, I'll back up. But they'll try to walk behind me. I had a guy one time try to push me out of the way. And I'm leaning against the wall. And I was like, you can walk in front of me. No, just move, man. Like, You're not walking behind me. My back is against the wall. Walk in front of me. And he turned around and looked at me. And I said, you're not getting behind me. Walk in front of me. Well, the thing was, he had his other hand down in front of him. Like he had something in his hand. I don't know what he was going to try to do. But he didn't get away with it that day. And when he came out of the store, he turned and looked, looked right at me. He was going to try something. I'm glad I didn't let him walk behind me. We go to restaurants. I sit with my back to the wall as much as I can because I don't want people behind me. A lot of people think it's weird. It's just PTSD. Well, no, there's other reasons. I, I want to watch. 
I want to see what's going on when I'm driving. I don't mess with my phone, um, especially if I'm on the highway. I focus on the road. And I'll have people in the car, oh, look at this, oh, look at that. I'm not looking. Oh, did you not see it? Well, no, I'm focusing on driving. Look at the people. Look at how they're driving. I mean, there's times I come home from going to the VA, I'm a nervous wreck. You know, my trip is 86 miles one way and 86 that because I take a different route so I can avoid all the heavy traffic. I'm a nervous wreck afterwards. I'm, I'm tired because it's so exhausting driving in traffic like, that bad, you know, people swerving towards me and stuff like that. We always have to watch. It, it, things can be going perfectly great, but we have to watch because you just never know what the enemy is planning to do and who he's going to bring about his plans through involving you. And so we are ready. We don't know when the Lord is coming. We're ready. We don't know what's going to unfold today. I don't know what's going to unfold. We're ready. We're always ready and watching. And if you're in the word every day, you're always prepared, armed with the armor in Ephesians 6, living that armor every day. And so when the enemy comes, he can't get you. You're, you're ready. You're watching. I remember reading, I'll close with this. I remember reading uh, historical battles and there was one, I can't remember where it was. I don't think it was the middle, it might've been the Middle East. Might've been England. Anyway, they, big battle, nobody could gain any ground. And so what they did is they had, uh, there was one way to sneak into their area, their encampment. It was through a waterway. Now, this has happened in the Bible, too, with, uh, I believe it was Daniel. Or not Daniel, uh, David. But they had this same thing happened with these guys, too. And so they set up armor and stuff. And like, so it looked like dummies, like the guards had fallen asleep. In their, in their watch post. And so the, they brought their troops around and came into that back way and they met them there. Now, funny enough, there's a story in the Bible where the same thing happened. They met them at that waterway so they couldn't get through. They tricked them. They thought that they, their enemy had let their guard down and said, so okay, now's our chance. But they, they didn't. They were watching. It talks about the watchman in the Bible. Always being watchful. Don't fall asleep on duty. Warn when you see the sword coming. Because if you don't, there's going to be blood on your hands. How many people are going to have blood on your hands? Be ready, brothers and sisters. Now, I'm not talking about being stressed out and depressed and super hyper-vigilant. I'm talking about be ready. Be ready at all times. And it's just a way of living. If we could do that, our lamps will be full of oil. We'll, we'll always be watching. And found watching when he comes. Found doing what... He gave us to do when he comes, which means he will find faith on the earth when he comes. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.